people's attention spans are at an all-time low because of Twitter. People can't even be bothered to download a free track. Now that's sad, I think. Maybe not sad, you know, maybe it is just a sign of the times, but we've gone from giving out, having to give music away for free to not even bothering because people don't even want to download a free track anymore. They don't care, it's been devalued so much. I think an artist can have longevity, but you just have to play the long game, really. You have to think, right, well, this is album one, we're going to do it, we're going to do three albums or something like that. And um, to talk to your fans and make sure that you engage your fan base and don't become just another tweet. And, you know, make sure you're having conversations with people liking your stuff or buying your music or sharing your music. If you can nurture them, then they'll stay with you, I think. Because the idea of being a fan of a band has not disappeared. It's just the ways you can have access to your band has changed. And um, your band have to make sure that their content is engaging enough to keep you interested and to let you know that they actually still exist because there's so much other stuff going on online. So do you think of recorded music now as just a, a part of the tool set for, for marketing the artist in, in a way and that as a commodity, to something to sell, it, that's kind of just, you know, not really a realistic you know, avenue of, of, of revenue as far as the artist is concerned. It's just another marketing tool for you to use. I think for small to medium artists, I do think that the actual recorded music is the, like the musical part of your campaign and isn't the main thing. Whereas you still have people like Coldplay and Adele, you know, who are selling a lot of records still, and a lot of those are physical as well. So it's not gone yet at all, and it might not. We don't know what the future has in, in store, but you know, it might. Um, but I think for a small to medium-sized artist, you need to have it without sound too marketing. You have to have a brand. You've got to be able to give fans an experience and let them know what you're all about. You know, you have to have a, a website that looks good. I mean, I always say websites are just a, an online representation of what you've got going on anyway. So if you, you know, when you get on someone's website, they have to get an idea of what you look like, what you sound like, what kind of stuff you're into, and what kind of experience it's going to give them if they're your fan. And obviously you have to be integrated so they can share it to their friends across their social networks as well. So you have to have, you know, your web presence is... Online, it's just as important as the music, obviously, because it's the only way you can get that music across to people. It's making sure that your web presence is all working as it should and it's you know, attractive for people to get involved with. Do any of your artists still have physical products? Yeah, we still work with physical stock, um, especially on the comedy side of stuff, really, as well, because it's not, quite, it's, not the same, it's not the same as music, comedy, the downloaded thing, it just isn't the same. But for music, yeah, some people are still releasing physical, and obviously there's um, the vinyl side of it as well. I mean, vinyl's doing all right, really. You know, people just make less of it now, so it costs less. But you, I think that's where marketing, you know, re online marketing really comes into play. Because if you're clever, you can indirectly ask your ask your fan base what they'd like to buy, how much they'd like to pay for it, and where they'd like to buy it from. So if you do your marketing and your communications the right way, you could press up, you know, 500 vinyl, put it into the right shops, or sell it from your website, and they'd all go because you kind of used it to your advantage. So it's less of a gamble. Um, but yeah, physical is an expensive option these days and most things are just, are digital. If you were giving some advice to an artist, would you say steer away from it because it's an expert, you know, it, it, it can be a nice um, sort of touchy-feely thing for, for a fan to buy, but generally it's like an expensive avenue to go down and, you know, is there any future in that? Or? Well, I think it, it's, it's, de it's dependent on, on the artist, really. There's a lot of artists that do very well um, touring and they sell quite a lot of CDs at their shows, which is obviously, that's a viable business method because you know you're going to shift your stock. Um, but there are other people that don't have a fan base and I would suggest to them that they, they sell digitally so that the overheads are low, build your fan base, and then what I just said, you know, um, about asking your fans what they want to buy, maybe do a bit of research like that, and then maybe on the second album you think about doing physical, be it vinyl or CD, you know, and see if the fans actually want it. But yeah, it is a gamble, and you have to be aware of the marketplace that you're trading in. And if nobody else is releasing, CD, you know, is putting out CDs anymore, probably you shouldn't either if you're at the same kind of level as that, unless you've got loads of funding and don't care too much if you don't sell it. But, um, yeah, just be smart, really. People are finding other ways to make money out of music-based experiences, whether that's advertising, brand partnerships, or selling merch, you know, integrating merch options into streaming services. It's just finding ways to make money for artists. Um, I do, I'm not sure what the future of the value of recorded music will be if we'll manage to turn that around and 
or maybe it was a phase recorded music being worth something maybe in the future because of the nature of sharing maybe all media will just become one mass that people experience and then you just have to you know highlight pinpoint that with um opportunities to buy stuff along the way um but i think as long as we stay smart and and you know try to offer things of value to people associated with the music of their favorite person then hopefully people will be able to still keep creating and we'll all still be in a job <laughs> So if you want to know more about how the music industry works, subscribe for regular updates, or you could leave a comment or ask a question below. Um, we'll get a music industry expert to answer it for you. I want it to sound like the album. I want someone to shut their eyes and think that, that I'm minding. You know, that would be the ultimate uh, praise.